This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global from Jersey, I believe. I'm joined by a true character in boxing, a true legend of boxing, Jerry Cooney. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing great. It's great to be with you tonight. Where am I? Where, where are we talking from? I'm in London at the moment. Nice, nice over here. I love London. Well, yeah. But uh, we're all suffering the same thing at the moment, Jerry. Um, how are you managing day to day? You know, I take nice long walks with my wife. Uh, I go to my gym by ourselves, my kids, and I train them. Uh, I'm still on radio, Sirius XM, every Monday, every Friday on uh, Sirius 156, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm keeping myself busy. You know, it's all good. I miss doing my thing. But listen, in the height of what's going on, it's kind of scary out there. Yeah, of course. We will come on to boxing in a second, but I think first we've got to mention the sad news recently of uh, Eddie Cotton uh, and his past. So just a comment from yourself on that, Jerry. Eddie Cotton was a good friend of mine. We played golf together. He was a great referee. Um, and we had a great relationship. And uh, we, were always to, we were always, in the summertime, get out and play golf. We talked all the time. Listen, he was a great referee. He was great for boxing. And he's going to be missed, and it's terrible that this disease took him like that so young. Mm. Uh, condolences go out to prayers, everyone. Prayers to him and his family. Definitely, well said. Jerry, as I said, uh, you're an iconic figure, I think, in boxing because of the, you know, the, the fighters you fought in your career. Let's start with arguably a top five heavyweight in a lot of people's eyes, Larry Holmes. Do you think he's underappreciated, Jerry? I do think he's underappreciated. I think what happened with him was that he came along in a time when Ali was there, and Ali got all that attention. And when Holmes Holmes was learned from 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 Ali, he was a great fighter. I still put him in the top four heavyweights of history in his time in his prime, and so it became a little bit bitter because he didn't get that attention. So, but he's a great guy now. Which I was on with him today, Instagram. I was on Instagram live with him for an hour today. Talking oh, no. about the fight and about Wish life, and it was all good. And so, yeah, I, mean, I love Larry Holmes. He's been a great for the game, and uh, we are together 12, 15 times a year doing appearances. And uh, I'm proud to to have fought him, and proud to be a friend of his. Just out of interest, Jerry, what would you say the top five heavyweights of all time would be if Larry's in the top five? Who are the well, other? I mean, of course, Larry Holmes, George Foreman would be one of them, uh, Jack Johnson. Um, um, it's one, two, three, four with the Holmes. One more guy, you know. I mean, um, oh God, I don't know. You know, Lennox Lewis or or, or uh, one of those guys. I mean, Lennox Lewis is a great fighter too. I mean, in his right, I'm uh, I'm proud to know him and I'm proud to watch all his fights. He got tagged a couple of times. Everybody does. He got up, you know, had the rematches, got the wins back. So he's doing great right now, doing television. So I'd have to put him as one of those five. Mm. Ali as well. Oh, Ali! I said Ali, Foreman, um, uh, Larry Holmes, uh, Lennox Lewis, and who's the other guy? Jack, uh, Jack Johnson. Mm. He was a great fighter, way ahead of his time. Well, there's another one that you mentioned in that list, George Foreman, that you fought. Oh. Can you give me a name in terms of who was the the toughest? Where, where you felt in the ring, where you felt, wow, this guy's something special. I'm guessing it's either Larry or George Foreman. Oh, I would definitely say Larry Larry Holmes. He he was cute. He was cunning. He was patient. He waited. I mean, he dropped me in the second round, and then I got up, and they said, why didn't you go after him? He said, this guy can punch. I got plenty of time. And he was patient. He waited, and he was smart. He let me open up on him and waited at the right times and, you know, tired me out. Uh, it was 115 degrees that night. I hadn't had much experience leading up to that fight. I had mostly all knockouts, but... Listen, he's a bad. He was a bad man in the ring in his day. Some of the notable fighters as well: Michael Spinks, uh, Ron Lau, Ken Norton. Some fantastic fighters he shared. Well, not Michael Spinks. Michael Spinks, listen, was a a blown up heavyweight. In my normal day, I knocked Michael Spinks out in one or two rounds. I was drinking. I wasn't taking care of myself. The fight was on. The fight was off. It was going to happen. It wasn't going to happen. I didn't believe I was fighting even when I got in the ring that night. And I was a pretty sick kid at that time. And it was after that that I was able to put down the drink. And as a matter of fact, this month on the 21st of April, 1988, is when I last had a drink. That's 32 years ago. 
Wow. You, I've heard you talk about your recovery from uh, drugs and drink before. We've seen a similar case with Tyson Fury, who's become two-time heavyweight champion of the world recently. We all know what sort of journey um, led to that. Um, did you kind of see yourself in, in him a little bit whilst he was going through them struggles, well-documented struggles, Jerry? Um, you know, I, I don't really know. because We didn't really hear exactly what was going on. I know he put on a lot of weight. He was drinking and doing uh, cocaine. You know, um, listen, he was at the right time. Uh, Klitschko was at the end of the run. Listen, no doubt about it. Fury is a great fighter. He's a very good um, patient tactician. He faints all night long, keeps you off balance. But in my day, when we were fighting, it wasn't maybe I'm going to get to his body. I'm going to get to his body. I got to work those ribs. I got to get inside. I got to work his ribs. When I work those ribs, those hands are coming down. When they do, I'm going to hit him on the chin. Now, you know, I saw Stevie Cunningham uh, drop him in, in, in the garden back in the day. And, you know, listen, he's a phenomenal guy. He fought uh, uh, Deontay Wilder uh, in, in a, to a draw, which I thought he won the fight. I thought he beat Wilder that first time. Uh, came back. And if you remember in that, in that uh, first fight, he got dropped in the 12th round. He was sleeping. The referee told me he got to five and Fury's eyes woke up and he jumped off the floor and went after Wilder. He chased Wilder down. He took that into the last fight with him and walked uh, Wilder down. Wilder was lost. He never could fight back and up. That was the same as Kenny Norton. He was a great fighter coming forward, but if you backed him up, he couldn't fight. And that's what Fury did to him. And listen, you got to take your hat off to that man because you had to figure sometime in that fight Wilder was going to catch him with something. And Fury took him to school. And I, I tell you what, I you know, want to talk about that rematch that's coming up. I don't know if it's so good. Well, maybe it's good because uh, because of this virus, Wilder's going to get a lot of extra time in the gym practicing and trying to figure out some other toolboxes to use against a guy like Fury. If, if this fight took place when it was supposed to, you had to favor Fury. I mean, listen, you know, Wilder can hit with that right hand anytime he can go out. But basically, Tyson Fury has his number. And this time, it's going to postpone this fight. It's going to benefit Deontay Wilder because he's going to have more time in the gym to figure out his mistakes. In that time, Jerry, what do you think Wilder can change? Because the first, fight, uh, the second fight, rather, uh, two months ago was extremely one-sided. What can Wilder change to change the young outcome in the third fight? Listen, he has to get it, get the ground back. He gave up all that ground in that ring. You got to take that real estate back. You got to step to the side. You can't fight from right in front of him. You got to get to the side of him. You got to come inside, work his body. You got to bang that body before he holds on to you. And uh, the referee's not going to let him hold on that much. And then you start learning upstairs. Listen, there's a lot of things for him. He's a rookie, he looked like that night. All he was looking for was that right hand all night long. And Fury knew it. You gotta be able, at that level, at the A rate level, you gotta have more tools than that, than depending on that big right hand, because it don't work. And we found out it didn't work that night for him. Jerry, a couple of days ago, Deontay Wilder made some comments saying that Fury isn't a real champion. Where do you think he's coming from? He's trying to make him, he's trying to build his confidence up. He's trying to, 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 you know, like, listen, when you sign for a fight with somebody, you play chess with each other. It's a chess match going on. You say this, he says that. But, you know, obviously he's trying to build himself back up again because he was really kind of, you know, I mean, in that fight, we were at that fight. The people were like downcast for what happened with him. And, uh, you know, he has the tools to do it. He's got to get somebody in his camp who can teach him how to do those other special things that all those great trainers like Eddie Fudge and Victor Valley and Gil Clancy and all those other great guys who used to teach that stuff, they're gone. And what happened is in boxing, a watered down version of boxing came in and that's what's teaching him. And he depended on that right hand. He, you know, listen, let's face it, he knocked everybody out. But you got to, at this level, the A level, you got to have all the tools in the bank. You got to step to the left. You got to weave underneath. You got to get inside. You know, Fury's soft in the middle. 
I'd be on that belly all day long. I would be banging that belly or I'd be breaking those ribs. Jerry, the favourites uh, for the two upcoming heavyweight fights whenever they happen after this lockdown are Fury and Joshua. Joshua against Pulev and Fury against Wilder. If that is the case and those two are victorious and, and fight each other, the two Brits, how do you see that going, Jerry, Fury and Joshua? I think it's a great fight for boxing. Uh, I think it's how well did Joshua get his confidence back? I mean, last time he ran scared in his, sec in his rematch with, with Ruiz. How much confidence does he have? And let me tell you something. Tyson Fury, that fainting he does keeps you off balance. You don't know if you're coming or going. And the confidence that he's built up in himself from these last victories, from the wins he had, he's taking it in the ring with him. And, and so, uh, you know, that's uh, going to be telltale. And, you know, obviously, listen, Josh is going to have to get on him. And, and, and Fury's also got a lot of confidence in that right hand. He hurt Wilder a lot with his right hand in the first fight and in the second fight. So, you know, I, I, you know, it's a, you know I, I really love Joshua. I think he's a great heavyweight champion. He represents the title well. He's a good fighter. And I don't think he takes it too good on the button. And I think that that's a flaw he has. And he's got to learn to keep his hands up. Don't stand up so straight. Stay back out of the, look at the picture. Don't be in the picture and fight. And he's going to have to fight his ass off. He can't run with, with, uh, with Fury because Fury's got that seven foot arm, however long that is. He's got to get inside and rough up Fury. Would you, would you take favor some shots on him? Do you believe he knocks him out? Who? Do you, do you believe Fury knocks him out, Joshua? Uh, you know what? I haven't thought about this. You're the first time I've thought about that fight. And um, I think it's an interesting fight in light of what's happened to both these guys. And uh, it's a challenge. You know, uh, Fury needs a challenge. This is a big challenge for him. They've been wanting for this fight all this time. I think that uh, it depends who comes to the show. Who shows up in Joshua? Who shows up in Fury? You know, I mean, that's the deal. You know, Fury fights with a style that they don't throw a lot of punches. The fights don't let you, you know, if people fight for a thousand punches a fight, 800 punches a fight, those guys don't do that when you fight a style against him. Because he keeps you not sure. You, you're off balance all the time. Who's in, his, who's in, in, in Joshua's corner? Who's in Fury's corner? That's the deal. Jerry, also, uh, Denon White's in this picture. He's mandatory. I love that guy. I love that guy. I know you do. That's why I brought him up. Uh, yeah, thoughts on Dylan White? Dillian White is the guy who I'm sorry to say Eddie Hearn used to test all these other guys out. And he succeeded and got all those tests and won all those fights. Give him a shot for crying out loud. Stop making him wait. He deserves it. He's, he's been very... Um, He's put up with it. I mean, he's not really, uh, I'd, be more, I'd be much angrier, but I guess I don't get you nowhere. He deserves the shot with Joshua, with Fury, with Wilder. He wants everybody. So hopefully he gets past this next fight when everybody's fight. Listen, boxing is going to, when it starts back, when the, when the uh, fans get the confidence to get back in those stadiums, we are going to see a lot of great fights. A lot of great fights. And we have to. Because the public ain't going to stand for it anymore. Let's hope so, Jerry. Let's hope you're right. In America, what's the popularity like of the heavyweights? How well known is Tyson Fury? How well known is Deontay Wilder? Well, I think that uh, you know Tyson Fury is a, is, a, is a is a great character guy. He's a, he's a great you know uh, promoter. He's uh, he's half crazy, but you love him. You know, you love the guy. And he fights. He, he, he's not only he tells you what's going to happen, he does it. And you kind of don't believe him half the time. I had a figure in the second fight that Wilder was going to catch him with that right hand sometime. Fury took it away from him. Wow. Amazing. Now, let me see what, what Wilder's going to do in this third fight. From what I understand, he brought two new guys into camp. What are you going to teach him? You know, you, you're going to have to teach. I know. I know what I would teach him. I know how what I would teach him to fight. You got to take that ground. You got to back him up. You got to cut the ring off. You got to get inside. You're gonna have to work hard. You're gonna have to fight. 
you have to fight hard to win your championship, that championship back. I'm hoping that uh, we're going to see a great fight with those two guys because boxing needs it. And I want to see Usyk go with one of these guys. There's so many great matchups that can happen. I'd like to see Usyk and Dillian White. Although Dillian White should have made it already, he deserves the shot, not another shot with a, with a guy like Usyk. You know what I mean? Some people doubt Usyk at heavyweight because of his size, but we saw at Cruiserweight his skill set and uh, he became undisputed champion, of course. Do you think he could kind of slip under the radar and and, and get all the belts, maybe, Usyk? I don't know. I think he, I think he, be, he can beat a lot, of, a lot of those guys. He's a tough, durable guy. We don't know how he's going to take a shot from a real heavyweight when a, a Johnny Ruiz uh, catches a hold of him with a shot or, or one of those guys catches him, but... Listen, we have seen Fury goes down, Wilder goes down, Joshua goes down. So, I mean, it's, it's open for, it's there for the taking. Mm -hmm. I want to see uh, uh, Ruiz against the, you said, Ruiz said last time, I want to fight that fat guy, the Polish guy, uh, what's his Cal name? Naki. Cal Naki. I, I want to see that fight. I want to see those two guys fight off. Listen, that's a shame. Ruiz going into the fight 15 pounds overweight against, against, uh, you know, Joshua and, and having, an, you know, not being in shape, following him around the ring, not cutting the ring off. You're the heavyweight champ of the world. You don't know how to cut the ring off. You don't know how to get inside and punch. And listen, you know, Joshua ran. He ran the whole night. He stole the fight. But I mean, really, that was a confidence builder somewhat, but not really. He, at the end of the fight, he was starting to try and land some combinations but I still think he needs some work, and we're going to see how those guys unfold. But it's so great to be in our seats right now. Definitely, I agree. Wow. Uh, I, I agree with you. Once it comes back, the bigger fights are going to have to be made quicker. They just are. So let's mm -hmm. hope that happens. Jerry, it's been a pleasure talking to you, uh, and I'm sure we will catch up soon, hopefully in person, uh, when I come across the pond once this lockdown's over. Have you got anything you'd like to add, Jerry? Wait one second here. Oh, watch it there, bro. That was the right hand, bro. No, I mean, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm excited. About, my book is out. I got my, my book is out. Uh, Gentleman Jerry, a contender in the ring, a champion in recovery. Larry Holmes just told me an hour ago he's coming out with a second book. We're going to travel around, do some of my book signings, and go out. It's a great read. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, bookstores. Gentleman Jerry, it's a great story, and uh, it's a successful story. And, uh, you know, we get knocked, we all get knocked down in life. Do we get up and dust off our pants and move on? And that's what I was able to do. And I got a great life, a great family, saved my money, and I'm coming to see you one of these days. It's good to hear, Jerry. If you, if you want to put the link of the book wherever it's being sold online, you can send it to me. I'll put it in the description of the video. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No worries. Thank right. you, brother. Peace. Right, LTV. Yeah, and Peace take care. Soon, Thank you.